Well, I think music has an immense political power. It has a social power. It has a, above everything, it has the power to create communion and therefore to create community. So I think music in itself is an instrument, you know, of society. And you can use it in whatever way you want. I don't necessarily explicitly uh, look for issues to, to sing about every time. I have written songs which address certain issues quite specifically, but I think each one should find their own way to, to, to go about this, you know. Never forgetting, though, that you are creating community, you are creating a resonance, and you have to choose what kind of energy you want to put out there in the world, you know. What do you want to communicate to people, not only through the words of a song, but through the song itself, which already is going to communicate lots of things. Festejo de Color is a song that I wrote for my grandparents, which means uh, something like celebration of color. A carnival of color and it's a song that uh, speaks about migration. My four grandparents were immigrants that escaped the Holocaust and arrived to Chile which is a country probably they never heard of before arriving there to live there for the rest of their lives and have their families there. So when um, these days I see the issue of migration becoming such an urgent matter around the world I'm kind of glad that I wrote this song in a very personal and intimate motivation but it applies really to the context that we all live in, wherever we live now in the world. Peoples have always moved from one place to the other. It is a fundamental human right to be able to migrate. Uh, nevertheless, we are such selfish people when it comes to feeling that our livelihood is being threatened by those who come from far away. You know? So racism and xenophobia and the hate of the difference is something uh, very real and very present and very challenging in our modern world. So this song really applies in that context. The song itself, though, not only on a lyrical um, perspective, speaks directly to this issue, especially on its rhythm, which is a quite a interesting thing. And let me explain. If you listen to this, uh, to this little riff... It might be a little bit tricky to follow rhythmically, to, to follow the beat. For the most people, when I say in a concert, so clap your hands, people have no idea what to do. <laughs> and it is for a reason. It's because the rhythm of this riff is 12-8, which is very much the ground rhythm, either 6-8 or 12-8, of many of the folk music of Latin America, because it is coming from an African root, you no, know, an African influence. And being 12-8 means that, of course, you can very, very funkily combine the fill in four, so that is four parts of three beats, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or you can also fill it in three, so three longer parts of four beats, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and together it's the two against three, which is really the spine, you know, of, of most of Latin American folk music. But also, and this is where it gets funky, you can subdivide 12-8 as two irregular bits of 5 and 7, like a bar 5 over 7, so that would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. And if you listen closely to this riff, it's actually 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, and so on, no? So 5, 7. But... So that's one level of it, but also when I'm strumming, I'm also hinting at the three against four, which is the real African feel, no? So... So I could sing this melody against the five seven, strictly. Or I could sing it over very clear 6-8. Which is quite interesting when you are really able to play and feel these three beats at the same time. And where I find it get really funky is that not only it's three different beats, but it's three different beats that combine different traditions. So on the one side, the roots of Latin American folk music, but on the other side, this feeling of five and seven, which is clearly a sort of Central Eastern European rhythmical structures, you know, which applies to the music of Serbia, of Ukraine, of Poland sometimes, which is where part of my family was coming from. So it is kind of, without saying one word already, 
the song is in a way speaking of the mixture of those sounds, of those rhythms, with the rhythms of Latin America, which is where I was uh, born and where I grew up. So before saying one word about the song, it already says what it wants to say just by the music itself, you know. And then moving on to the lyrics, uh, the lyrics of the song are written in a structure of poetry that is called decimas. And decimas are found all through uh, Latin America, and they originate in Spain in the end of the Middle Age uh, and, and towards the Renaissance. And it is incredible because it's a form of poetry that was born out of a semi, how do you say, intellectual written context, but it traveled to the Americas and it became really the ground basis of improvised poetry and popular poetry, not only in Chile, but in pretty much every other uh, Spanish-speaking country of the Americas, Argentina, Colombia, Peru, uh, in Central Americas, in Mexico, everywhere you go, in Cuba, there's an amazing tradition. So there's many, 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 many amazing songs that are written in decimas. And there's a whole style of improvised singing also. In each country, it has a different name and a different style. And it is a really beautiful thing to be able to study these different traditions. I recommend very much, if you're interested in this, that you take a look at uh, Jorge Drexler and his TED talk, where he really uh, approaches the decima in a bit more depth. But it's also an interesting fact that you would be singing about, about this mixing of peoples and this mixing of colors and traditions and cultures in a poetical structure that is at the same time very, very traditional to each place and very dear to the localist and to the purist of their tradition. But at the same time, it's actually something that is present everywhere and that is a uniting factor all through the Spanish-speaking world. So it is also, at some level, uh, a political statement, you know, to sing contemporary songs using centuries-old structures that are at the same time a tradition of each place, but also joining together all these different traditions.